Welcome to Yacht Talk. We are in the neighbourhood of Hammersmith in southwest London to meet the designers Harrison and Eidsgaard in their studio. Hello Ben. Hi Charlotte, welcome to Harrison Eyes Guard. Thank you very much. Some of the heat and tulips Thank for you. Thank you. And some waffles. Wonderful. Should we take a look around? Absolutely. So this is the 51 metre full custom Yacht Arisha that we built with Heeson. And there's an interesting story about it. Indeed. So the, the owners of this project um, initially bought Lady Petro, or ex-Lady Petro, which was Franz Heeson's own private yacht, um, and loved Heeson and decided to then build a new build. And we were lucky enough to be employed as the interior and exterior designers of this full custom yacht. And Irisha was the gateway to other projects with Heeson? Absolutely. I think through the process of working with them over the three and a half year build time, um, we had an opportunity to build a relationship, understand how each other worked, and uh, from that we're now you know, working on two new build projects, Akira and Skyfall. And that's what we're going to discuss next. Let's go. Hello Richard. Hey Charlotte. Well thanks very much for having us today. Absolute pleasure. You're welcome. So tell us about the history of Harrison Eidsgaard. How did it all start? So, I think following on from your last conversation, your last Heeson conversation, uh, we are indeed a product of the Bannenberg uh, pyramid, so to speak. Uh, we founded the company in 2005, uh, and Richard was the first person to join us. Yeah, so I was, I've been here 14 years now, uh, since 2007, and uh, been very much part of the, the, the growth of the firm. So we're here to talk about a specific project, Project Akira. So what was the brief for it? So interestingly um, and unusually, Heeson approached us very early on in the process um, and this was a new kind of uh, way of thinking for them where they wanted to bring in us as the interior designers earlier than normal to then have the opportunity to develop the GA in collaboration with their engineering team. Um, and, and that has led to some sort of very interesting and I think very positive developments to the way that the boat um, is, is indeed set out today. So tell us a bit more about those developments. Uh, what's um, interesting in particular about uh, Akira, some of the special features for instance, or maybe challenges you encountered during the process? Well, I think one of the, one of the most interesting features is actually the staircase. So the atrium staircase uh, allows for um, the incorporation of, of a lift in the, in the central shaft. We have um, an open stairs uh, option as well, which creates inc incredible views all the way up through the boat. Um, but the fact we can incorporate a lift into there as well is quite a challenge from an engineering standpoint, um, but also keeping the, uh, the aesthetic uh, pleasing. And I mean, another, another sort of fantastic sort of sales point is, is, is a dedicated beach club. So that's something, you know, 57 meter yacht, very often the tenders are stored in this sort of lazarette, I think it's a typical Heeson feature in the lazarette area. And uh, right from the beginning with the, you know, with the sales team, we discussed making this a dedicated beach club area and I think that's something we're seeing clients more and more looking to have on board. Are you seeing a change in clients' tastes? I mean, are they looking for something a bit different, maybe more experiential, like a beach club for instance? Um, I mean, I, I think perhaps not necessarily s sort of clients' tastes. I think it is the uh, lifestyle choices and the way in which people want to live on board. We're seeing more and more people wanting to have indoor-outdoor indoor, outdoor spaces, a lot more emphasis on, on sort of water sports, exercise, um, yeah, there's, a, like there's more in, uh, informality uh, these days, I think, uh, to a degree. Uh, is, well, where can I see myself with my family, uh, children, guests on board, at the same time maintaining separation when they want, want that? Um, but it is, like Ben says, it, it's the ability to be, uh, have the doors open and be able to sort of drift from one space to the other. So we have to keep that in mind in terms of the design uh, between uh, the exterior, of course, and uh, the interior um, that we're developing. It almost sounds like clients want to treat it as a proper home. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there, Charlotte. I think more and more we're seeing, you know, 
particularly, and it's very pertinent at the moment with COVID, you know, people are needing to work remotely. And I think, you know, part of the design process now is creating more of a, a home. It's not just somewhere to go to for a week's holiday. It's actually somewhere where people might work from, they might live there. A and in that, we're seeing a lot of perhaps, you know, residential influences coming into it. They want it to be relaxed, you know, whereas very often interiors would be very high gloss and, you know, maybe a Louis Quinze or something very, very heavy. People now want something that is perhaps more reflective of their lifestyle um, and this, this outdoor way of living. What do you think defines you as designers? I mean, if I looked at a Harrison Eidsgaard design, what should I look for? And how can I know it's you guys? Again, a very interesting uh, point. You know, I think designers do have a, a style, whether you, whether you whether it's intended or not, you, you do have a signature. And I think we as a company definitely sway towards the contemporary look. I think that's probably our own personal preference and personalities coming through there. Um, however, you know, our, our job in the super yacht industry is to listen to the owner, to listen to their wants and their requirements. Um, and therefore, it's to take that and to essentially take them through the process and make them feel they have ownership of the design. And of course, we bring with it a little bit of our own sort of, you know, ideas and flair. But I, th I think, you know, it is important that owners really feel when they're building something custom, that it is, it is their ideas, that we're, we're really, we're the pencil to draw the design. I think as well, uh, our interiors are very considered. Um, we, we consider the fact that there are different elements within that interior. There are primary, secondary elements. The primary elements, pieces of furniture, pieces of uh, beautiful credenza or something like this, this is where we can really embellish and, and, uh, and create amazing detail and spend uh, our budget wisely to really sort of show off um, uh, our flair for the design. The secondary elements could be considered as the background and we can be, keep those quite simple, quite relaxed. Um, but it's breaking up those elements and knowing where to embellish the interior um, is something that I think we do very well. And I think, I think that's actually it's a very interesting point because it's something we've done on board. Akira, as you know, is a speculative build from Heeson's perspective. Uh, and so it, within that, there's a budget. You know, there is a budget on this. It's not a full custom yacht where there are also often budgets. But we've tried to keep the background quite simple in many respects. And then there are these key features. So, you know, when you look at the visuals of the main saloon, and we have one behind us here, um, there is a credenza and that is an absolute piece of jewellery. It sits within the room and that, that's what your, your focus will become. Actually, the panelling behind it can really be quite simple, not particularly expensive, and, and it then frames this jewel, if you like, and that's what gives it its richness and, it, and its feeling of quality. Akira will not be delivered until 2024, I understand. So uh, which bits are you working on currently? A lot of the interior uh, styling, if we call it that, has, has, been, uh, has been done already, but we are now in the process of um, drawing that boat, in that interior, into working uh, design drawings that are then going to be handed over to, to the yard. So the technical drawing package is, is uh, very much in development, and, um, and we are already signed off a, lo a lot of that information. And uh, yeah, we're now going to the next stage, really, where that, those design drawings are taken by Heeson, transferred to working construction drawings, and ready for production. And of course, another very important part, and, and we're absolutely at this point at the moment, is the um, development with the shipyard and with their own outfitters of the materials. So we say, okay, there's a base wood, there's a light wood or a medium wood or a dark wood. We now have to go through the process of actually refining those, making the physical samples, testing them for things like sunlight bleaching, and then re-looking at all of our fabrics to make sure that everything sits together harmoniously. Um, and um, so that's we're in the sampling process at the moment to then give a definitive specification for all of the interior finishes. So we do actually have a number of very interesting uh, materials that we're using on board. Um, the first of which is this, this is an effect called ombre. Um, and we like to use it as a little bit of a signature perhaps of our, of our firm. Um, but it's essentially where you take a material from a dark colour to a light tone um, and we can do it in a metallised finish. This is, in this example, is in a lacquer. 
it's very difficult to do. Um, and I know that the guys at Heaston are working very hard to try and achieve our requests. This is actually a plaster finish. Um, we transition from polished through to honed, back to polished. And there is a variation to that finish that will go all the way from floor to ceiling. We're going to run it completely through the owner's bathroom. Um, it's going to be a wonderful effect and it's never been done before. To find out more about the process of building Akira, let's join Tom Eric Bass, who's technical sales engineer at Heaston. Hello, Tom Eric. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Charlotte. Thanks for having me. Now, Tom Eric, you are a technical sales engineer at Heaston. So tell us about your role uh, on project Akira, because it has changed. Yes, that's correct. Um, for the last nine years, I've been working for, uh, for Heaston. And of these nine years, yeah, the last one and a half years are uh, in the role as a technical sales engineer. But before that, I was, uh, I was a naval architect, so part of the design and development team who actually developed project Akira. So that was a very nice journey to, uh, yeah, to develop and to make a complete new series for, for Heaston, together with all the, all the other naval architects as well. Now, Akira is the first yacht of the new 57-meter aluminum series of Heaston. So can you take us through some of the key highlights of the yacht? Yeah, I think the, yeah, the highlight which I'm uh, most proud of is that we uh, yeah, achieved a complete Heaston DNA new uh, series with, with all these aspects uh, combined. So both fast, lightweight, large uh, hull and superstructure windows and yeah, still, still rigid and solid and with a very sleek and good looking uh, styling. So I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to manage all these aspects into one yeah, nice future-proof uh, series. And what makes Akira special from an engineering perspective? Or actually, I should say, what makes it tricky from your perspective? The most tricky aspect of the, um, uh, of the project was to, uh, to combine the shallow draft together with this high speed and to still be able to create a rigid and solid uh, construction within the aluminium uh, material which we are uh, building the boat of. And that, yeah, that was a real uh, nice task to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to complete, to be honest. So what's our current development stage? The current development stage is that the engineering departments are currently uh, full ahead with all the workshop drawings, all the, all the work uh, preparation. So they will be able to deliver a, a complete package to the production uh, departments uh, yeah, to be able to deliver the yacht in time. And when can we expect to see her cruising on the ocean? The technical launch will be in the mid of February uh, 2024 and after uh, commissioning and extensive sea trials, she will be able to be delivered at the end of May 2024. Fantastic, Tom and Eric, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Charlotte, you're welcome. The tradition in Yacht Talk is to make you answer a question passed on by a guest of the previous show. So your job today is to answer a question by Joff. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know Ben very well and we, we've done some projects together. Um, so Ben, if you were not a yacht designer, what and you wanted to work in the yachting industry, what would your favorite job be other than doing yacht design? Well, I think obviously a broker for Burgess. No, I, I think <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think you know I so love the creative process. You know, and that's obviously why we're designers. So if I couldn't be a designer, I think I'd want to be some, somehow part of the manufacture, the building of the yachts. And so perhaps working at one of the shipyards as, you know, I think I'd be quite good as a welder. Okay, <laughs> interesting one. Brilliant. And you, Richard? Um, I would rather be uh, at sea, so I'd rather be um, actually at the helm and maybe uh, a captain uh, if I can get to that position. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd rather be out there and actually I am in charge of a, a yacht. I find the operational aspect of yachting, I find it very interesting. So whenever I'm on board and I'm uh, lucky enough to be um, allowed onto the bridge, um, it's always a, a privilege. Okay, so Ben, it's now your turn to send a question to the next guest of Yacht Talk, who will be Jim Dixon of Winch Designs. So what's your question? Yeah, so Jim and I actually know each other very well. We both worked, we were both colleagues uh, at the same time at uh, Winch Design. Um, so what's interesting, you know, Jim and I started out drawing everything by hand and with a pencil um, and times have changed dramatically since then. So my question to Jim is in today's day and age, 
What does he find the most challenging aspect of the yacht design process? Okay, so Jim, the question is, what do you find the most challenging aspect of yacht design today? Well, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks very much. Stay with us. Next episode of Yacht Talk, we will be visiting Woolwich Design to talk about Project Sparta. In the meantime, keep yachting.